So let's talk about God. And in the Srimad Bhagavatam and in general, the Vedic concept, very interesting that in, in, in yoga as well, it presents three aspects of God. God is having three separate aspects. The first is Brahman. Brahman means many things. Brahman just means transcendence. Brahman can refer to the soul. Brahman can refer to anything transcendental. But also Brahman refers to the divine light, right? Divine light society. So Brahman refers to the divine light and it's this aspect of God of light. His, you think about his aura, his light, his, you know, infinite ocean of light, of transcendence. So that's the Brahman, it's the all-pervasive, it penetrates everything, all of existence. That's the Brahman. So in the Brahman, you have a transcendental energy, but you don't have form, and you don't have personality. Okay? And another aspect of God is called Paramatma. And Paramatma is also a very curious concept that you find in the yoga tradition of God. This is a localized aspect of God. So it's God expanding himself to be fully present within the hearts of every single living being, not just humans, but every single living being, and in every atom. So this is a big deal in the Bhagavad Gita, and Krishna explains it in detail. He says how, in the 13th chapter, and the 15th chapter, he dedicates to this topic. He says, in every person, there are two witnesses. He says, there's God, there's me, he says, and then there's the, there's the soul. Two witnesses. And in the Upanishads, you'll, you have this common example of two birds in the tree. Because we know in a, in a tree you have two birds, you can't see the birds, you just see the tree, but you know, there are two birds in the tree. So they, they use that terminology, two birds in the tree. And one is looking at the other one. One bird is trying to eat the fruit of the tree and the other bird is just looking at that bird who's trying to enjoy the tree. So we're the little bird trying to enjoy this this body and God is just looking, waiting patiently. When is this guy going to figure it out, you know? <laughs> when is he going to turn around and look at me? So that's Paramatma. And you'll see, in, again, Bhagavatam and in different texts, Bhagavad Gita, the, the meditation path of yoga, the dhyana path, the yogis would meditate. Krishna talks about the, the Sat Chakra path and the Dhyana Yogi. And they would meditate on Paramatma. And their focus would be to see Paramatma within themselves. And they would actually see it. And you know, the form is actually described like, like this is an artist's conception, but you know, the form of the lotus and the symbols, the conch, and lotus, and, and mace, and disc, and you know, the, and the jewels, and koshtu. So all these things are actually described, and the, and the yogis would see this form in their hearts. This is the localized form. So with Paramatma, notice we have form. So now we have the energy and we have form, but we don't have so much, there's no much, you know, there's, not much there's no personality, as it were. The Paramatma is almost like a deity in the altar. In the sense that, you know, there's form, but, you know, you can't dance with this form of Krishna. You can't, you know, there's no, you know, it's, 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 it's a static form. Okay. And lastly, the third aspect is Bhagavan. And Bhagavan is the full personal aspect of God. So that would be God that you have personality, form, and energy. And with Bhagavan, then you actually have face-to-face -face exchanges. And you can dance with God, and you can play with Him, and you can talk to Him, and you can 
to wrestle with him and run with him, etc. So then, the, so the tradition offers these. It says that God he can be seen in these three aspects. And of course, the Bhagavan form for the bhakti yogi it's the highest form, because that's the form with, with he, which he can actually interact with eternally. So when you hear about the gopis dancing with Krishna, this is what it's all about. The gopis are, you know, they're in their spiritual bodies dancing with God in his spiritual body in the spiritual abode. That's the concept. And so when you talk about Bhagavan, then what you see in the tradition is these different forms of Bhagavan, which is very confusing for the newcomer. For people who are just, you know, they're getting in touch with this culture, it can be very confusing. Because there are many forms of Bhagavan. So there's Rama, and Nirshengadev, and Matsya, and, and Krishna, and it gets confusing. Because God is infinite, so a lot of people think, no, there can't be a personal form of God, because that would be limiting. But it's not limiting, because actually, Krishna, God can expand himself unlimitedly. He can have unlimited Bhagavan forms. Different forms where he is totally him, but it's a, just a different manifestation of his divine personality. So the most famous ones, Krishna, Rama, and they have different looks, they're different personality traits, they have different associates, etc. And the Krishna tradition, the Krishna Bhakti tradition says, no, with Krishna, that would be the highest Bhagavan form. Because with Krishna, it manifests God's qualities entirely. It's the most intimate, the sweetest form. And the other Bhagavan forms have less qualities being manifested. And that's why the Krishna form would be the highest. So with Krishna, you get to have intimacy. It's the only Bhagavan form that allows for intimacy. And that's again the stories of the gopis dancing and, and the love affairs and the boat trips and you know, all these things only happen in the Krishna tradition. They don't happen in the Rama tradition. And certainly not in Narayana, Shingha, etc. Only in the Krishna tradition do you have this invitation for sweet, intimate love. <laughs>